So consider triangle ABC below. Let's say B is 46, so let's write that in. B, angle B is 46, so this is 46 degrees. Angle C is 60 degrees, so this right here is 60 degrees. And it says side A is 65. All right, those are information they give us right here. It is not drawn to scale, but the goal of this problem is to solve the triangle. I want to solve the triangle, meaning I want to find all sides and angles of this triangle. And we want to be careful here. We want answers in tenths, and there might be no solution. So we'll take a look at that as we go. So here we go. Let's start with the missing angle, angle A. Well, if we have two angles, can't we find the third angle just since they add up to 180? So if I want angle A, isn't A going to be equal to 180? And I'm going to subtract 60 and 46 degrees. And won't that give me my measurement for angle A? And that would give us 74 degrees. So I'm going to go put 74 degrees in there. Yay, that was pretty easy. OK. So from there, we need to now find B and C. And we don't have a right angle, so we can't use trig, but we can use law of sines down here. Now with law of sines, what it states is angle A, the sine of angle A, and the side opposite of it, which is called side A, is equal to this um, sine of angle B and its side opposite B, which you can see in the picture. Um, it doesn't matter what letters we use. We're basically just looking at trying to find, to start off with, something where we have an angle and its opposite side. So for this particular one, look at the picture. Where do we have an angle and its opposite side? And it's right here. Don't we have those two? You always have to start with an angle and it, that has an opposite side. So we're going to begin with that. So to begin this, we're going to say sine 74 degrees over the opposite side, which is 65, is equal to, well, it depends on if we want B or C. I'm going to start with B. If I want, oops, I should probably make that a lowercase b. If I want B right here, I want B. What angle is opposite of side B? It's 46. So if I put sine 46 degrees. So what I'm using here is A and B. You could use B and C. You could use any of these configurations. But what I did is I chose one that I know and then found a missing piece. And can I now solve this for B? So in order to solve this, I'm going to use cross-multiplying. To me, it makes a lot of sense. So I'm going to cross-multiply there. And I get B times sine 74 degrees. And that would equal to the cross that multiplication, which is 64 times sine 46 degrees. And to solve this, I'm going to divide both sides by sine 74 degrees. That would disappear. So this is sine 74 degrees. So side B is equal to 65 times sine 46 degrees over sine 74 degrees. Now, that is the exact value, all right? But let's get the decimal approximation of that because that's some creepy number. So we got to stick it in a calculator and see what we get. And what you get is 48.6. So that right there is side B. We have angle 74. So we have one more piece. We want to find side C. And we want them in tenths place, which that was nice. Didn't have tenths place. This has tenths place. So the last step is I want to find C. And we're going to use basically the same process over again. So what I have to do for this one is I'm going to set up this again to start with. Because isn't this our beginning spot? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, okay, sine 74 degrees to 65. That's over here. That's sine A over A. But this time I'm going to use this, sine C over C. So what I have here is that equals to, I want, I want C, and what is angle C? Angle C was 60 degrees. 
So now I set up a new proportion using A's and C's. Now, basically, it's the same process over again. It's very redundant. So we're going to cross multiply C times sine 74 degrees equals cross multiply 65 times sine 60 degrees. You'll start seeing patterns as you do these more. Divide both sides by sine 74 degrees. Gone. And when we stick that in our calculator, we'll get C as approximately this. Let's see what our calculator gets. You should be getting 58.6. So that would be the value of C. So we have B, C, and A, which we now have all the sides and angles. We have solved the triangle. Now, whenever you're done with these, there's one last step. You want to see if you made any dumb mistakes with quick checks. Isn't this the biggest angle? So won't the biggest side be 65? All right? So isn't this the smallest angle? So won't this be, B should be the smallest side. If we look at it, isn't this smaller than that? So isn't C the medium size angle? So won't it be the medium size side? So isn't 58.6 between these two? So we know we're on the right track, at least. Yes, our decimals could be off, but at least we didn't do something egregious, huge mistake. Um, you want to always check that before you hit submit.